Well, I'm going to guess that we're live. Um, hi, everyone. Happy Friday. Welcome to the Jada and Stitches show. Welcome to the craft room. We've got something a little different for you today. Um, we are still experimenting with our tech and our software. So we're going to do kind of a live tutorial today. We're going to see how that works out. Uh, Mr. and Stitches is back in the well. You can say hello, Mr. and Stitches. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> I've put him back in the well for the day. Uh, so it's like I said, we're still kind of fiddling with things here. Uh, and if you can give us a tech check, that would be great. Let us know if you can uh, hear me and see me. And also if you can maybe hear the mister when he says hello or... <laughs> hello. I'm still in the well. Still in the well. And then I will explain what we are up to. I'm just uh, making a daisy here. The chat have anything to say, no, Mr. Sidges? We're, we're good to go. All right, we are good to go. So it is Friday the 17th of February. I hope everybody had a nice Valentine's Day. We certainly did. And um, we thought today we would try something a little bit different. So we've been we've been experimenting with our technical uh, our technical things. We got better internet recently, and so we've been able to sort of fiddle around with our, our tech. Uh, we moved into a new craft room, which unfortunately uh, I can't have Mr. Stitches in here yet with me because there's not enough space. <laughs> um, so that's why he sounds like he's down a well. He's not in the room with me, but we are working on that. Uh, but one of the other things we wanted to try in the meantime was to see about doing a live tutorial of sorts. So what we're going to do today, uh, if you want to sit and put your feet up and just work on a work in progress, a whip, uh, that's fine too. We're going to create um, I'm going to be making a <laughs> spring toilet paper cover. So we have a toilet paper cover that's a Christmas theme already on the channel. It's our Santa, it looks like little Santa pants or Santa jacket, uh, toilet paper, or we call it bathroom tissue um, cover, a TP cover. And we decided that it was probably time we did another one. So I'm going to do a spring inspired one today. It's going to be a green cover and I'm going to put some daisy appliques on it. So I'm just working on a couple of daisies. And since it's kind of like a module, it's a it's a mashup, if you will, of a couple of our existing tutorials. We have the tutorial for the toilet paper cover and we have the tutorial for the daisy applique. So we are going to do a live crochet along. I'm going to be working on it. I'll sort of be saying what I do as I go, but in the meantime, Mr. and Stitches has kind of made a mashup of those two tutorials, which we are going to hopefully play uh, somewhere, either up here or down there, uh, while I'm working. So if you um, are kind of just sitting there and you know paying attention, we'll have a close-up of what I'm doing down below, and it's going to play on repeat because I don't know how long this is going to go today. Um, and otherwise, you can always come back to this live stream later if you want to sort of watch the video uh, play while I'm chatting. It's not going to have any sound on. I'm just going to kind of loosely explain what I'm doing. We will have links to the two original tutorials, so the Santa jacket TP cover and the Daisy applique tutorial. We will make sure that those full-on um, tutorials are linked down below probably later after this live stream is finished and kind of become a regular video. And we're going to have a pattern for today's uh, tutorial in the shop later today. So uh, while we're making it, I'm going to take some photographs and uh, I'm going to put together uh, the pattern. We're going to write it up and we're going to get that up into our Etsy shop sometime later today after today's live stream. So we're trying a whole bunch of kind of fun, neat things here today. On a Friday, a, an overcast, kind of chilly Friday in February. Um, so had to have a little bit of spring. Uh, we saw some squirrel activity and some bird activity in the last couple of days. So there's like hopes that spring is coming. So that is the plan. Um, I'm just going to finish off. Maybe I'll, I'll finish this off in a little, a little while. I'm making one of the, our little daisy appliques. These things are so cute and fun. Um, it's just two rows. The first row is the center and the last row are the petals. This is kind of what's going to come last, but I just thought I would whip one up quickly uh, while we were setting up for today's live stream. 
and uh, see if I could still remember how to do them. I've got some notes here in my book in my lap. And um, Mr. and Stitches is in the chat, pressing buttons, saying hello to everybody. Um, he's going to try and do his best to keep me uh, updated as to what's going on. But I'm, uh, I'm still here. I think, I think everyone can hear me a little bit. Yeah, okay. You just sound like you're down a well. I just sound like I'm in, in the well, my cozy little well. Your cozy little well. Buried in, uh, in computers. Computers and, and a couple of chocolate bars. I threw some stuff down there for you. So you... I appreciate that. <laughs> Did you have to take a bite out of it before you threw it down? <laughs> well, I had to make sure it was good. Can't be giving you, like, you know, not good chocolate. All right. A um, little quick note on the appliques. Um, when you finish your applique, so in this case, the daisy, make sure you cut a nice long tail because that's what you're going to stitch it down with. And um, there is my little daisy applique. Now, I'll explain that a little bit better in greater detail once we get to that today, if we get to that, to that today, but that's what my little daisies are gonna look like. I'm not even sure how many I'm gonna make. I'm thinking five, but it might be fewer because these might be maybe a little large, um, but I'll get back to that. So that's jumping ahead. That's typical of me, jumping ahead. All right, for today's tutorial, I've got a nice green, spring green, 100% acrylic yarn. You can use cotton, you can use wool, you can use a blend, you can use whatever fiber you want. If it's something you think you're going to be tossing into the washing machine frequently, I highly recommend cotton. Cotton just washes better. It doesn't pill quite as fast, especially if you use a nice mercerized or um, a really tightly wound cotton. If you're just going to hand wash it, you can use anything you want because when you're hand washing, you can be a lot gentler and your stuff isn't going to pill as quickly if you hand wash. So this is, uh, I believe this is a Red Heart Comfort. Um, I'm probably going to need around 45 yards of the green, and I just need the green for the cover. That's because I'm just going to make it one color, um, just so it kind of looks like a green, a basic green lawn background. I'm going to use a 5.5 millimeter hook, which is also an I or a nine. I've got a pair of scissors and a yarn needle here in my uh, handy little bucket at my feet. And I'm gonna start. So, Mr. and Stitches, yes. are you ready? Um, yes, I wanted to, um, I'm coming in. Okay, Woo. I'm crawling out of the hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, it smells fresh in here. The air is so fresh up here. Um, <laughs> that would be neat. <laughs> I, I, I want you to let everyone know we're gonna try that new uh, mem member experiment. Oh, so yeah, if we you have tell one. everyone about it. I'm gonna, I'm and you're gonna, gonna try, try it okay, on my so phone and see if it. We'll do that first before I get into this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then we'll start the okay. tutorial. Holy cow! So that we have one other experiment we're gonna try. So recently, YouTube launched this this thing where people can buy memberships for other people. So we can do it. People who are watching uh, um, on just watching the stream can do it. So anybody who has it enabled. Um, if they have memberships and stuff enabled, people can do this. So somebody can, I think you go to the little dollar sign at the bottom of the screen and you have the option there now, to, in addition to like super chats or I think joining, now you can buy memberships for people. We're going to try it. Mr. and Stitches is going to buy a group of memberships. And what happens is that the, uh, the algorithm automatically gives them out to some people. So we're going to, I think we're going to buy, like, how many did you think you were going to buy? Um, I'm not sure. I'm going to see. Here. Okay. We, this is all I new to us. Options, yeah, we don't, we haven't done this before. So we're going to try it. Mr. Stitch is going to buy a group of I'm memberships. Gonna buy, I'm going to buy 20. You're going to buy 20? Okay. Yeah. So Mr. Stitch is going to buy 20 memberships. And then they will automatically be, like, allotted to people who are in the chat or watching live right now. So you have to be watching us live. Um, and you should see, if you haven't already um, seen, there's a little button in the, in the, there's a few ways to get to this, but once he purchases the memberships and it kind of lands somehow in the chat, you should all see a button. If you're logged in as your username, you should see a little button pop up that says, allow gifts on this channel something like that it'll either be in the chat or it'll kind of flash up 
um, on the screen. I don't know. It's. I don't think it would work. I just did it. You just did it? It shows on the screen. It, I listed 20 memberships, and they should be distributed. Okay. So what's going to happen is that you have to have clicked the button to say allow gifts. And then once you've clicked that, um, it will, the algorithm will randomly give them out to people. Now, we understand that they are given out, the, the algorithm recognizes who say, um, like little things like how long they've been subscribed to the channel, how many watch minutes or watch hours they have logged on the channel. So a whole bunch of things like this. And then obviously you're not a member already if you get one. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm watching it work in real time. Yeah. So I get I bought 20 memberships and it just started randomly giving them to people that are in the chat oh right now okay. and it's showing who's getting a membership. Like okay. Everyone should be able to see it in the chat. Okay. Oh, it this looks is really so good. cool. Okay. I'll, I'll show you later. Okay, later. great. So anyway, so we thought we would try it today. So we we were able to just buy now. We have no control over who gets them. The the algorithm just randomly distributes them. But other people can do the same thing. So if down the road, you know, we're running a live stream and you feel like, um, you know, kind of being generous to uh, your fellow subs, you might want to consider buying a pack of, of memberships. Um, I think the options, there are different options for different numbers of them. But then uh, we get the benefit of a little bit of financial support for the channel. Thank you very much. And also you um, help sort of give everybody a little membership. I think it's like a 30 day membership. So they get to be a member for, for like a month and that entitles them to, um, is it the, the silk membership level? It's, silk, it's yeah. the silk membership level. So you get to be a silk member for a month and, um, and kind of check out all the things that happen yeah. with being a silk member. So, that's so that's kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> so we thought we would try that today because we hadn't had a chance to do that yet. And um, it looked kind of like fun. So um, so we'll see what everybody thinks of that. And uh, so that's the membership trial. Like so that, that lasts, uh, that lasts uh, 30 days. That lasts 30 days, okay, yeah. Cool. Yeah. And um, so that's a new thing that YouTube's trying out. We thought we would try it out today, too. And now that that's done, we are going to try the second little experiment today, which is the live tutorial. So I'm going to start the tutorial, me working along in my lap here, just like I would be if I was by myself. I will kind of say what I'm doing. It's very easy to follow. We're going to link the original tutorials that this is kind of created from down below later. And I think Mr. Zeus might be able to, if he has them, he might be able to link them in the chat, but we'll see. He's got a lot going on over there. <laughs> um, but we're also going to run a mashup of the two tutorials that we're using. Um, in the screen, probably just down here. Um, and Mr. and Stitches is going to let me know when he has a chance to get that started. I'm going to start it right You're now. You're going to start right now. OK, we'll see how this goes. So I'm going to start with the cover itself. Like I said, I'm using the green. This is a four weight, 100% uh, acrylic. But you can use any fiber you want. But try to make it a four weight, uh, because it is kind of based on the size of the, the toilet roll cover. And I'm using the half double crochet stitch today. I'm going to start with a cinch circle. And I'm not chaining two at the beginning of my half double crochet rows. I'm only going to use a half, a chain one. And I'm going to start by working eight, I have my notes here, eight half double crochets into the cinch circle. And we'll see if the same tutorial plays down at the bottom. And please give Mr. Institches some feedback, like if you can see it, how it looks, if you think it's in the right place on the screen. Uh, and it doesn't have any sound. Um, we just figured that might be a little too confusing with me talking and, and it talking too. I'd like to shout out some uh, membership um, milestones. Okay. Because um, I was kind of busy there giving away all the membership. So a <laughs> uh, big shout out to Jessica Rabbit. Hi, Jessica Rabbit. And um, Tessie, Caitlin, who gave us a super sticker. Thank you. Uh, Tessie and Caitlin. Congratulations to all our new members. They're all <laughs> listed here in the chat. It's pretty fun. That's so fun. Welcome to the new members. Um, let's see here. Uh, big uh, thank you to Mandy's Doll Couture. Hi, Mandy. Us, uh, milestone. Woohoo. Uh, Sherry and Leslie. Sherry and Leslie. Hi, gang. Glad you guys could make it today. 
<clears throat> okay, so after I've got eight half double crochet into my cinch circle, I'm going to cinch it up nice and tight. And I'm actually going to join. So I'm joining with a slip stitch to the top of that first half double crochet. I'm going to chain one, but it's not going to count as a half double crochet for row two. I'm going to work two half double crochet. Actually, no, I'm going to work a half double crochet into the same stitch that I joined in. And then I'm going to work a half double crochet, two half double crochets into each of the next seven stitches. And that will get me 13, no, 15. And then I'm going to work out, once I get to the end of the row, I'm going to actually use the false stitch. So I'm going to also, my gosh, I'm going to do a couple of different things here today. Let me just get my half double crochets in here. Like we said, we're going to try running the, the original tutorial down below. So if you're wondering why it's in red, it's because it's the original tutorial. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So half double crochet in the same stitches joining, two half double crochets in each of the next seven stitches. That brings you up to the false stitch. And I'm actually going to take a picture of that. And it will appear, hopefully, in the tutorial or in the pattern that we're doing later today. <laughs> You're watching a lot happen in real time today. <laughs> This is a lot of fun. I love doing this. I like taking pictures of my work as I go. Sometimes I do this for my own project journals. And then, of course, some of this actually winds up in our patterns, like this one will. There we go. Ha ha. All right. We're going to work a half double crochet into that false stitch and then join with a slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet we made. Chain one, starting row three, half double crochet in the same stitches joining, half double crochet into the next stitch. And then the pattern is two half double crochet into the next stitch, half double crochet once into the stitch after that. Repeat that seven times all the way around. And like I said, we've got the original tutorial. So if you need a little extra help with the visuals on this later in a larger format, we'll have that link down below. But hopefully it's kind of playing. I know a lot of you can just sort of like pick things up just sort of by looking at it. Um, and if I'm kind of telling you what I'm doing as I go, um, you can sort of figure out the rest yourself. So we thought we would try that today. Plus, this is just your basic kind of growing circle. Uh, when you get all the way back around the beginning, so half double crochet in the same stitch is joining, half double crochet in the next stitch. Then the repeater is two half double crochet in the next stitch, one half double crochet in the stitch after that. Repeat that little repeater seven times. That brings you back to the false stitch, which is this little guy. It sits right at the bottom of whatever you, whenever you're joining in the round and you slip stitch to join, you end up with something called the false stitch. And sometimes we use it, sometimes we don't. I'm using it for this pattern. Half double crochet into the false stitch and then join with a slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet you made. That's row three complete. Chain one to begin row four, half double crochet in the same stitches joining. Half double crochet once into each of the next two stitches. Then the little repeater for, we're gonna do seven times around is two half double crochet in the next stitch, half double crochet once into each of the next two. And, what am I at here? So we just had 24 stitches at the end of row three. And this is going to be 32 stitches at the end of row four. So if you're keeping track, and it's a helpful thing to do. So two, one, one, two, one, one, all the way around. Back to the false stitch. We're going to half double crochet in the false stitch when we get there. And then join the row with the slip stitch. We'll have 32 stitches at the end of this row. You're doing great, huh? <laughs> is that you saying that, or is that people in the chat? <laughs> That's me. Okay, thank you. Well, you're getting a lot of uh, a lot of love here. Aw, thanks, guys. Lots of love. Well, I, like we said, we thought we would try kind of a fun little experiment. So I'm going to say what I'm doing, but we're also going to run it next to us, and then um, we'll link to the original tutorials. And we'll have this pattern. We'll have today's pattern up in the shop later today, which I think is kind of a fun thing to do. 
So that is 31 stitches plus we half double crochet into the false stitch that finishes the row with 32. Join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain or the first half double crochet because we're not counting the chain one that starts the row. So that's 32 stitches at the end of row four. And we've got another one to go, row five. Chain one to start the row, half double crochet in the same stitches joining. Half double crochet into each of the next three stitches. One, two, three. And then the new repeater is two half double crochet in the next stitch, a half double crochet in each of the next three stitches. And you repeat that seven times. And we'll be up to 40 stitches at the end of row five. And I'm talking and counting in my head at the same time. So I have no idea if this is going to turn out well. <laughs> Well or not. <laughs> I think it will. I can I, I'm getting to the point where I do so much of this that I can kind of do multiples in my head and not have to think too hard about it. I'm gonna see if I can I'm sure the little tutorial that's playing is gonna finish this part of the um, this part of the cover long before I do because there's uh, several rows of just straight single crochet once we start working around and around and around, which I will get to in a minute, uh, <laughs> which we don't do in real time on the tutorial. Yeah. Okay. So row five, half double crochet in the same stitches joining after you chain one, half double crochet into each of the next three stitches, and then the repeater for row five is two half double crochet into the next stitch, half double crochet into each of the next three stitches. You repeat that seven times. That brings us to 39 stitches. Then we get to the full stitch. We're going to half double crochet into that. Slip stitch to join at the top of the first half double crochet you made, and that gives you 40 stitches for row five. And row five, when complete, looks something like that. I might just take a picture of that too. Flatten it out, make it look pretty. Get a nice, nice photograph here. There we go. Now, row six. Row six, we switch it up from half double crochet to single crochet. So you chain one to begin row six. You single crochet in the same stitches joining. Single crochet into each of the next four stitches. And then the new repeater for row six the last row of increasing, two single crochet into the next stitch and single crochet once into each of the next four stitches. You repeat that seven times and that brings you up to the false stitch. You're going to single crochet into the false stitch and then we should have 48 stitches at the end of row six. And then I don't have to pay much attention to what I'm doing at all because we'll just be single crocheting around and around and around for several rows. <laughs> Some people are watching us while at work. Oh. So they have to do it covertly. Covert. Covert live stream watching. I'll put it on the, I'll put it on the screen. <laughs> so that's the end of row six. That's just a row of single crochet to finish things off. I think I'll take a picture of that too. So the single crochet, if it's, it should be uh, as wide, <laughs> get your toilet paper handy. Your toilet paper should fit on top of your circle, 
once you've finished row six, and you should be able to see that row of single crochet all the way around the outside of it. So that's a good way, to, <laughs> if you're making one of these, to measure, make sure that it fits all the way around. Uh, also, if you need it to be bigger, you can do another row of increase using single crochet, or you can take out that row of single crochet and do another row of increase using half double crochet. I know uh, toilet paper comes in slightly different sizes, so you might may need something that's a bit wider, you might need something that's a bit skinnier. Um, I'm making this sort of for the, the idea being that it's a brand new roll and it's sitting kind of, you know, waiting to be used. Just taking another picture so just here. Just so you know, the, um, the uh, side video, the tutorial video has moved on to the daisy. To the daisy? Run and it'll repeat. Yep, okay. Yeah, I figured it would. That's fine. Um, so the daisy is also, uh, we have a tutorial. Like we obviously have a, a tutorial for that, which we'll link as well. Um, but if you wanted to jump on to the daisies, it's basically this little fellow. Um, very quickly, with yellow, you make a cinch circle and you single crochet eight times into the cinch circle, cinch it up nice and tight, join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet, fasten off, weave in your tails. Then you're going to join your white yarn with a slip stitch in any stitch, doesn't matter, chain six, half double crochet into the third chain from the hook half double crochet into each of the next two chains, single crochet into the last chain, and then slip stitch into the next stitch along the yellow center and start again. Chain six, half double crochet into the third chain from the hook, half double crochet into the next two chains, single crochet into the last chain. You're basically making little petals. Slip stitch into the next stitch along the center of the daisy, and you'll have eight little petals when you're done. Fasten off, leave the long tail because you're going to embroider these little guys to the toilet roll cover. Um, I started with one. I'm going to see how big it gets. Like, look how cute this is going to be. It's, I'm going to just cover it <laughs> with little daisies. I think it's going to be so cute. Fresh as a daisy kind of kind of suits the bathroom, doesn't it? <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. Sure. Got to have a bathroom joke in there, you know. Um, okay, so now I'm going to single crochet and every single stitch all the way around. I'm not joining rows anymore. Um, so I'm just going to chain one, single crochet in the same stitches joining to start row seven. I'm going to single crochet in every single stitch all the way around. I'm going to skip over the um, I'm going to skip over the fall stitch because I should still have 48 stitches at the end of row seven. And then I'm going to single crochet for row eight directly into the top of the first stitch of row seven. And if you have trouble seeing it, you might want to mark the first stitch of the row with a stitch marker. Uh, and then I'm just going to single crochet around and around and around and around until I get to row 20. So that will be um, how many rows? 13 rows, I think, in total. 13 or 14 rows in total of just straight single crochet. So I'm going to be doing this for a little while. Uh, which is why the little tutorial has moved on to the daisies. So if you want to sit and make a few daisies, you can do that. If you want to work on this, you can. Again, uh, I picked 20 rows because that's what I did with the Santa jacket toilet paper cover. And it works out to be about four and a half inches deep. So it should cover um, the toilet roll. But this is why you have your toilet roll handy. <laughs> You can keep trying the cover on your toilet roll like a little hat and uh, make sure that it's uh, gets it sort of covers it completely. So um, that may require a few rows less for you. It might require a few rows, maybe one more for you, depending on the size of the yarn you're using, the stretchiness of the fiber, your hook size, your tension, all of that. I'm just going to double check that I've got 48 stitches all the way around here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve. 20, 21, 22, 23, 7, 40, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I do need to use the false stitch. And then I'm not joining. I'm just going to start single crocheting in every single stitch all the way around. So make sure you've got 48 stitches at the end of row 7. Use the false stitch if you if you have to. Maybe um I think I'm not sure I've got to double check my original thing, but I needed to use it. So I don't know whether that's because I missed a stitch or I just needed to use it. I'm not sure. <laughs> but now I'm going to single crochet in every single stitch all the way around. I'm not joining rows for rows um, seven through 20. 
And I am going to aim to get a cover that's four and a half inches long and that covers my toilet roll paper. So let's see how quickly I can do that. If you have trouble counting rows when you're working in the round, sometimes it's really helpful to put a stitch marker on what was the first stitch or the last stitch of that row when you start working in the round. So for example, I kind of know where it is based on, um, I, I, I know what to look for, but if you're new to it, you can always do something like take a, a safety pin or another piece of yarn or stitch marker and just literally clip it to the first stitch, the front of the first stitch that started a row. And then you start working in the round. And every time you get back to that stitch marker, you'll know that you've reached the, the beginning again. And you can count your rows from there. I find sometimes that's helpful, uh, especially if I can't see the start and finish of a row. Um, that it becomes like if you're starting to use novelty yarns that kind of obscure your stitch work because it's like fluffy or feathery kind of yarn or maybe it's just really chunky or bulky and difficult to see stitch markers are really helpful in that hand, um, situation but when you're using yarn like once you get used to looking you know what you're looking at um you can sort of you can see the rows individually with when you're using something like a nice uh, tightly wound acrylic or wool or co cotton it's when you can see your individual stitches and rows, you may not need that any longer. Um, so it's a good thing to have if you're new um, or if you're using novelty yarn and it's difficult to see your stitches and rows because then you can count faster and you don't have to kind of sit there laboriously feeling your way back through the rows trying to figure out if you've made enough rows. But this pattern is flexible enough that if you try your little TP cover on over top of the toilet paper and it fits, it doesn't really matter how many rows you've done because it fits. So that's what you're going for. You're going for a, a nice fit for your toilet paper. <laughs> Likewise, if you wanted to stack a couple of toilet paper rows, um, sort of like you wanted to stack a couple on top of each other, you could just keep going uh, until maybe row, row 35 or 40 and it would cover two rolls. So, and then you could just put more daisies on it. So if you needed a, a taller TP cover, you can just keep crocheting around and around and around. Every row from row seven onwards has 48 stitches in it. Uh, so you don't have to, you don't have to uh, worry about increasing or decreasing once you get past row seven. And uh, just try not to skip any stitches and you shouldn't really have to count every row either, unless for some reason you think, hey, things are getting much tighter or much wider Count your stitches, make sure you haven't missed any or you haven't added any. But sometimes personal tension changes or the more comfortable you get crocheting, you might speed up, which sometimes speeds, like tightens up your, your, your crochet tension. Um, and you might also kind of relax and get comfortable with the pattern and chill out, which can loosen your tension. So you might end up with a slightly wider bowl shape, I guess, before it kind of turns itself into a bowl. As you can see, mine's sort of starting to turn itself into a bowl and it will eventually look more like a hat and then it will be a toilet paper cover when I am finished. So I also know, I don't have to count my rows just yet because I, like I said, I needed to cover the toilet paper. So I know for me, this will probably be row 20. Like I'll need 20 rows in total, um, but I'm not gonna bother counting until I think I'm close. And even then, I'm still going to try it on. <laughs> We've gone back around to the, uh, the cover. The cover. Okay, good. Um, I guess I'll just reiterate. We're going to have links to the original tutorials down below. Uh, if you're wondering why the cover is showing in red in the tutorials, because that's from our Santa toilet roll cover. And I'm making the exact same toilet roll cover, but in green so that I can cover it with daisies because I wanted a spring toilet roll cover for the bathroom. Um, we've been meaning to do this for a while and we thought it'd be kind of fun to try a mashup of our two tutorials, the toilet roll cover and our daisy applique. I love the daisy applique. I actually add it to a lot of different projects. 
and uh, we'll see how that looks. I don't know how many daisies are going to fit on this. Um, specifically for the daisy, I'm using the same size yarn, so size 4, medium weight acrylic, but I am using a smaller hook. I'm using a G6 or a 4.25, 4.5 millimeter hook. I just wanted to size it down a little bit because I wanted uh, slightly, slightly tighter stitches. Uh, you don't have to change hooks, but I just thought since in the original tutorial I used a 4.25 millimeter hook that I would use the same one for the daisies today because I kind of I like that size, I like the size they came out at. Um, so and I I have my hooks right here, so it's not a big deal to grab a different size one. And I'm gonna see how many rows I've done so far. Just single crochet all the way around just to build that, build sort of the, the long sleeves, the long sleeve, 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 the long sleeve <laughs> of the TP cover. Let's see, how many rows have I done? I'll get around to the beginning again before I count. I think I can tell I still have 48 stitches in my row because my my circle is turning into a nice bowl shape, so I think my tension is pretty even. Don't have to worry about that. All right, where am I at? There it is up there. Okay. Everyone misses me. Aww, I miss you too, sweetie. You do? I do. So can I come out of the well? Yeah, you can come out of the well. <laughs> One, two, three, you have to lure me out with snacks. <laughs> That's pretty much everything. I have to, yeah. <laughs> I have to me bait out, you. Lure me in, lure me to the left, lure me to the right. A little trail of snacks. A little trail of snacks. I've uh, completed 12 rows so far. So I've got eight more to do, and that will bring me to row 20. What kind of yarn are you using? Is it acrylic? I'm using acrylic. Um, so like I said, you can use, um, for a project like this, uh, you can use really any any fiber you've got. So it's not something you have to take terribly seriously. I'm using acrylic. You can use cotton, especially if you think you're going to toss it into the washing machine frequently. Now, acrylic can go in the washing machine, but acrylic has a tendency to pill even some of the non-pilling types if you wash it enough. Um, but I like to hand wash most of the things that I make. So in this case, I'm just using acrylic because it had the right color and I don't mind it sitting in the bathroom. Uh, so when it needs to be washed, I'll just hand wash it and it'll, it'll be fine. But you can use wool, you can use blends. Basically, if it's a size four weight yarn um, and you like the color, then it suits this project. I'm using a five and a half millimeter hook, which is an I or a nine, to make the cover itself. And once again, it's basic, it's just the, the same pattern that we used to make our Santa jacket toilet paper cover. Um, and I love that thing. It's one of my favorite little little Christmas decorations to pull out at Christmas. Cause I, I think it looks it, <laughs> I think it looks cute. It looks it kind of looks like Santa sitting on the back of the toilet. <laughs> Some of our uh, subscribers and channel members miss trolling me. Ah, yes, you're not as easy to troll when you're down a well. It's not as fun when it's only in the chat. <laughs> we are working on our tech setup. Um, so hopefully we will be able to share the same craft room soon. Uh, but we had a few more things we wanted to, to work on first. We actually, um, we did fix the second mic issue. Mm -hmm. But we wanted to we wanted to do this tutorial thing today, so yes, and we weren't sure if it would interfere. Yeah. Um. Yes. So we we have the ability to run two mics now, but we weren't sure if it would interfere, or if running two mics would still work if we were running a separate video. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of sympathy, so this is wonderful. <laughs> I know, it's kind of quiet when it's just me in here. Once I stop talking, if you're just sort of tapping buttons, they can't even hear you tapping buttons. 
No. No, I don't. Well, no, I wouldn't think so. Well, I'll pop in and say hello to okay. everyone. Hi, everybody. Everyone. Well. Let the trolling commence. <laughs> Commence trolling. Commence trolling. How how is it? Are I I uh um how is what? How is the everyone? Chat? Everyone's having a wonderful time. A wonderful Friday. The uh, chat is full of members and subscribers. Wonderful. All all uh having a conversation. That's great. Um, we've had compliments on your skirt. Oh, and we've thank had compliments you. on your hair. I made um, my skirt too. That's another skirt that I've made. Everyone's talking about projects they're working on. Good. I've been sharing the links to these videos in the chat Excellent. for the people that want to follow the tutorial yeah. step by step. And uh, shouting out all of our membership milestones via the screen. Beautiful. Uh, and super chats and super stickers. We've gotten a few of those. We are uh, going to um, have this. The pattern. membership gifting was was really fun. That. So, what, what so I like? I'm a I'm a member and a subscriber to Jada's channel. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I have to be. Otherwise, I'll get in trouble. Otherwise, no chocolate. <laughs> otherwise, I stay in the well. <laughs> um, so I purchased as a as a. You don't have to be a member. I think you just have to be a subscriber. I purchased a pack of twenty. Okay. So as soon as I purchased it, it popped up on the screen and said, "Mister and Stitches gifted twenty uh jada and stitches channel membership okay kind of looked like a super chat yeah and then as it's going up you're starting to see people anyone that's in the chat that's anyone that's on the video yep. or in the chat that's not live at the time uh, not a member yeah um just started randomly get, becoming a member oh my gosh that's so fun yeah so it was 20 20 of our subscribers that is so fun. Yeah, so how how exciting. Oh my um, gosh. I have a feeling that some of them don't even know their members yet. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, you might fun. get like, I don't know how that works. I don't know if you notice your name change. Your color name should now be in green and badge. there should be a little badge next to it. And I think um, we'll you might get an email. I have no idea. And I think yeah, this you is might all, get an email. Uh, experiment. We'll uh we'll try some, we'll do some more yeah. members' posts this afternoon. But too. anyone can do it, anyone can gift a membership, and you can gift uh, as little as one. And as many as I think fifty. Whoa. Which is a lot. Yeah. But anyway, there's a range. Oh, you, that is so neat. Yeah, you can just gift one membership. So anyway. It's, but it's random, which is fun. It's, it's totally fun. random. Yeah. It's, you have to be uh a, a sub I think you have to be a subscriber and you have to be in the live stream. Anyway, I'm going back to my hole. You're gonna that's go back to your well. That's where snacks the snacks are. are. <laughs> okay. Thank you. And I'm going to do a quick count of my rows here, because once I really get going, I'm like a steamroller, and I, I, if I'm not counting, which I don't always do, I often count in my head, but if I'm just sort of going around and around and around, I won't necessarily count, and then I'll lose track, and then I'll do a lot more rows. So as you can see, I've got kind of a, a hat thing going here, or a, a tall bowl. I'm going to quickly count my rows right from the start. One, two, three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I'm three rows away. Let's try it on. <laughs> I think three more rows will be enough. <laughs> it looks like a little mushroom. <laughs> oh my gosh, that would be cute too. Yeah. Remember the hat you made? Oh, I'm making a mushroom next. Oh my yeah, gosh. The, 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 yeah, my, my mushroom beret. I got to write that down so I don't forget. Mushroom. Mushroom. Oh my gosh. And then like three or four of them across the back of the toilet. <laughs> or on a little shelf. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's so cute. Okay, mushroom TP cover. <laughs> Guess what's happening this weekend around here? All right. We're gonna cover all of our toilet paper. <laughs> and then we won't be able to use it. We won't be able to find it or use it. All right, three more rows of single crochet, and that will completely cover it to the bottom. Now, like I said, if you're making this, you want to get to the end of row seven and plunk your toilet paper down on top of your circle. Make sure that you can see the edge of your crocheted circle uh, around the bottom edge of your toilet, pool, toilet paper roll, a full one, so that you know it'll fit. And then you can just start single crocheting in every single stitch all the way around and make this bowl shape that I'm making. I went for 20 rows because I know based on my hook and my yarn weight and my own tension that that's what fits the toilet paper roll perfectly. But if you need fewer rows or more rows based on your yarn and hook, 
uh, and tension, it doesn't matter. And this is a very flexible pattern. You basically just need to make as many rows as you need to cover the toilet paper. Uh, and then you just fasten off and weave in your tail when you're done and that the cover completes. And then I'm gonna start making daisies and I'm gonna sew a couple daisies on. And we'll see how that looks. I'm gonna count again. Two more rows. So, I mean, I know I crochet rather quickly and I'm comfortable with the pattern because I wrote it, but um, this is a really quick little project to whip up. Um, and of course, if you've got other crochet flowers, um, Bima uh, was sort of sharing some photographs with me at the Etsy shop the other day. She, she crochets some absolutely gorgeous flowers. You can put any flower you want on this. So I chose daisies because I just love daisies. They make me happy. Uh, but any kind of crochet flower would look really cute on this. And if they're three-dimensional, we have a really fun three-dimensional flower too that's actually got uh, two different colors involved with it. It's got great big petals. That would be really cute too. You could completely cover it in a bunch of three-dimensional flowers. And um, you only have to sort of sew around the bottom of the flower so that the whole thing kind of plops out um, in relief three-dimensionally. That would be really cute too. Flowers are kind of one of those things that you probably randomly crochet and then put them away in your make-ahead stash or your, your applique bin thinking, well, I might use that for a project down the road. So you may have already crocheted some flowers. So you might want to check out your, your stash to see if you have any because they might suit your little toilet roll cover. This is the kind of thing that like, I don't know, you, you could probably put in, you could, you could cover one in hearts, you could cover one in stars, you could cover one in clovers for, for St. Patrick's Day. You could just keep remaking this little uh, sleeve basically for the toilet roll cover and then uh, applique different things onto it for any time of the year. Definitely gonna have to make a mushroom because I think that's just hilarious. Candy won one of our uh, memberships today. No way! Welcome yeah. to the family, Cam. Yeah. <laughs> Uncle Cammy. A whole bunch of people. I, I wasn't able to keep up with the meeting. Oh, that's so great. I'm glad it worked out because yeah. I wasn't sure how it was gonna work. That's really exciting. Yeah, I thought I forgot we were going to give that a try today. That is so fun. Okay, I think that might be 20. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 1920. Okay. Woohoo! 20 it is. And I'm going to just double check that it fits on top of my toilet paper. Yep, it will. Perfect. So that will completely cover my toilet paper. <laughs> so that sleeve works for me. That's 20 rows of uh, in total. Um, the circular part is all half double crochet and the rest of it is all single crochet. I'm finished, so I'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch and fasten off scissors. No need to keep much of a tail. There we go. And I'm going to weave that in, grab my daisy. I'm done with that hook. So I'm going to pull up my next hook. Oh, I think I'll take a picture of that. It's getting kind of big. very excited. You want a membership? That's great. Who else got a membership today? Let us know in the chat. There were 20 of them. I think someone called the China Doll. Yeah, let if you you'll know if you got membership if you're unsure. Check your look at your name when you type something in the chat. It should show up green. I'm trying to 
trying to get a good angle on this. Oh my gosh, it's so funny. Put it on your head. I can't take a picture of it on my head. Come on, you can do it. Nope. May have to do that later. Did you let everyone know we're going to have this available in the shop? Yep, later? yep. This is going to, this pattern will be uh, up and available in the shop later today in our Etsy shop um, as soon as I've finished it. Trying to take some nice photographs for it. And, uh, it's kind of like watching watching me put something together in real time. <laughs> but if you wanted to try it yourself, like we said, we've got the tutorials. This is a tutorial mashup. It's um, the sleeve, the toilet paper sleeve from our Santa TP cover and our original Daisy applique tutorial. We've got full tutorials for both of those. So if you want to check them out because uh, you can't quite follow what I'm doing, during a live stream, or you can't quite see the little video playing below us, then that's what's up. So that's the sleeve complete. And now, where's my, I had it here a minute ago. Here it is. Now I'm gonna make a bunch of daisies and I'm not sure how many I'm gonna make and I'm not even sure where I'm gonna put them. I think I might sort of spread a couple. Oh, this is so cute. The idea is to try to make it look like daisies on the lawn or daisies in the grass kind of thing so I think I might might just sew one on to start and I think I might kind of make it so that it kind of um is some of the petal kind of leans over the top of it uh so all I did with the I made I made my first daisy I left a long tail I'm going to thread that up in my yarn needle and you can use the top facing loops of the actual um, sleeve, like the crochet sleeve, or you can go right through uh, if you're more comfortable doing that. It doesn't really matter because the inside of your little toilet paper sleeve isn't going to show. So I'm just going to randomly grab a loop and start, get a few stitches sewn down, and maybe I'll take a picture of that. Yeah, I'll get a picture of that. Make sure my finger's not in the picture. <laughs> You're doing a great job. Uh-huh. Thank you. There we go. Um, if you have to, you can pin your daisies or your applique, whatever applique you're using, into place first before you stitch it down. I just typically hold mine and when I'm going for kind of a like when I'm not terribly worried about where it, it ends up I don't I don't worry too much about it moving around on me but every few stitches you can sort of stop and you know move it around make sure that it's still relatively in the same place you can move around the little individual petals and uh, you don't have to stitch down every single stitch around all of the petals you can kind of skip the odd one um, because this isn't going to see a lot of, uh, it shouldn't see a lot of, of rough play. <laughs> I don't know how, how rough some of you are with your toilet paper. <laughs> None of my business. Oh, yeah, this is cute. Just a little little touch of spring had to have something I think we're supposed to be getting some freezing rain and freezing drizzle and whatnot so uh it's nice to think spring <laughs> I know it's coming <clears throat> hey mister everyone misses me oh I'm you. still here I'm just around the corner around the corner down the well <laughs> around the corner and down the well <clears throat> So, what's the... Uh, well, how's it looking? I can't... Going on how's here? it looking on the... Uh, how's the little video? It looks great. Yeah? Yeah. That's no so complaints. Neat. No complaints? So, it's fairly um, clear, is it? Or I'm hearing it's coming in crystal clear. Oh, good, 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 good. And um, both videos. So, that's good. That's fantastic. 
we had to sacrifice myself being in the well. Yes, well, we're going to work on that. funky double video. We are working on that. I don't mind the well. It's quiet down I know, there. I know you like the well. It's their snacks. <laughs> <laughs> it's quiet. It's not too wet. It's not, it's not too wet. It's a little damp, but it's mm, not too bad. A little damp. <laughs> it looks great. Yeah? Yeah. Cool. This is... Are you gonna do one or multiple? I'm gonna. Or well, I'm gonna. Decided? I thought I would sew on the daisy first, just to give everybody a, an, an idea, idea of what it's gonna look like, mm -hmm. and then I'm gonna make another daisy. Okay. Because I, I threw that. I. Yeah, you could do I one just sped through on that. top. You on one on side. You could mm -hmm. fill it with daisies yeah. if you wanted to. Like you could put like five or six or seven. Yeah, I, I kind of wanted that that um, mm -hmm. feeling that it was like, oh, you know, you're looking at daisies in the grass kind of feeling. So I'm going to go back into my little hole okay, and uh, see what's going on in the chat. Okay. I guess I'll see you later. I guess I'll see you later. Enjoy enjoy the well. Do you come here often? <laughs> pick, pick up lines from the well. <laughs> and yes, I do come here often. <laughs> All right, so far that's what it looks like. I'm uh, just working my way around. If I run out of sewing yarn, I'm just going to cut a tail, knot it on, and keep going. Um, not a big deal. I'll maybe just do the knotting on the inside. Uh, that's another thing you don't have to worry about so much if you're working on uh, this little project along with me. If you kind of don't cut enough uh, tail, you just add some more string. Uh, I just knot mine in close to the end so I, I i sew as long as i can before i absolutely have to tie in some more yarn and then if I, I i get the knot to sort of sit on the inside of the project and then i just keep going no big deal and that way actually you can sort of deal with a shorter sewing thread Christine wants to know if we're going to be playing more video games today. Ah, yes. A little, uh, how would I describe that? That's like our little secret clubhouse. <laughs> for gamers and nerds. For, for gamers and crocheters. For gamers and crocheters. We, yeah. uh, we, we, were, we are trying different experiments with our technical setup. Uh, so... On Valentine's Day, I asked Mr. Institutes what he wanted to do for Valentine's Day. He said he basically wanted to, to play video games. And I said, well, I feel like crocheting. And I and we said, gee, I bet you there's a lot of people out there who'd probably like to do the same thing. <laughs> so Mr. Institutes has a channel, as many of you know. Um, he puts up the odd little kind of collection of um, video playlists, I guess, that we've done here. There's a couple of little, he has his own couple of little tutorials on how to access different parts of YouTube, how to change things like your avatar picture, just you know some helpful little things that some of our um, our subscribers and members have asked about over the years. So he's kind of done little helpful tutorials on that. So he's that's the kind of stuff he has on his Mr. and Stitches channel. And um, oh, he also put together a spinner for the Granny Square game. So that's a fun little tutorial too. But uh, we thought we would just try live streaming there since we've never done it before and we were fiddling with the tech setup and we were going to play a video game that Jessica Rabbit uh, gave us, gifted to us on Steam. Um, and we thought, hey, why don't we give this a try? I love, I love to play video games and I also love to watch the video games being played while I crochet. Uh, so we thought, why not try a whole bunch of things at the same time for Valentine's Day, we'll just hang out. And we didn't announce it or anything because we never live stream over there. Uh, but we thought, ah, we'll just see what happens. And several of you found us anyway. <laughs> and we had a really nice afternoon just sort of sitting there crocheting, playing video games, chatting about video games and crocheting. So we know not everybody's into gaming, um, but we know a lot of you are or a lot of you have spouses that are. And it's kind of a fun thing to sit, watch a game being played. We, we like to play cozy games. Uh, so nothing, you know, violent or crazy or whatever, although we do play those, but we won't, we probably wouldn't be streaming anything like that. But we're playing a cozy game right now called uh, Yonder, the Cloud Catcher Chronicles, and it's really cute. Um, and you basically just run around kind of collecting stuff and making stuff and finding kittens. It's really cute. Anyway, um, that's what we were doing on Tuesday, which is Valentine's Day, and we'll probably do that again because we are fiddling with the tech. We're kind of getting it 
comfortable and it's just a nice way to sort of hang out. Mr. Stitches gets to play some video games while I work on something. And very casual hangout. Very casual, yeah. Christine said it was a lovely hangout. It was a lovely hangout. It was a lot of fun. Nice way to spend Chris, uh, to spend a Valentine's Day. Hanging out with everybody. We both got to do our favorite favorite uh, hobbies. So I'm getting to the end of my sewing thread or my sewing yarn. I'm going to take it to the inside of the hat or the little sleeve here for the toilet paper. So I'm just going to pull it to the inside. I'm going to flip it inside out so it just makes it easier to work on. So there it is on the inside. I'm going to cut myself some more white yarn and then knot it and then just continue sewing. So cut about halfway around so I'll cut the same amount again. Nothing too difficult. I'm just going to lay the two ends together, make a loop with them together, pass the ends through the loop and tie it nice and tight. Make sure they're both in there. And then pull on all of the ends just to make sure it's not going anywhere. There we go. And I'll continue. This would make such a cute little baby hat too. That might fit one to three months, that shape. One to three months, maybe. Yeah, one to three months. And then you could like roll up the roll up the brim a little bit. I would use a nice softer baby yarn though like a baby cotton or baby acrylic. All right, so I might get one more stitch in here before I hide that knot completely. And then I'm back to just stitching using the top facing loops. I find that's pretty quick and easy. Oh my gosh, this is really going to be cute. <laughs> Daisies are so happy. They're such a happy flower. Big shout out to the Naughty Hooker who sent us a $10 super chat. Thank you so much, Naughty Hooker. I love that. That's so cute. Also a crocheter and gamer. Yes. Yeah, that was fun on Tuesday, I have to say. Yeah, we'll probably do that again. It's kind of a nice way to hang out. It's like it's like kind of like, especially when some of these these games are kind of like, I mean, there's there's little puzzles to them. I always interact when Mr. and Stitches is playing a game and there's puzzles. I always tell them where to go and what to do. <laughs> but uh, it's also kind of just fun to sort of almost, it's almost like having a story read to you. Elle <laughs> says we need to start a fund for the intercom system. For an inter <laughs> Someone mentioned, was it? And who mentioned the baby monitor? Yes, last? somebody mentioned the baby monitor. We we we'd had kind of a similar idea, yeah. but we thought a baby monitor might be what might be a good one too. I like the baby monitor idea. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm almost all the way around my little daisy here. This is going to be so cute. Okay.
Nothing says spring quite like what you put on your toilet paper. <laughs> all right. There we go. It's all sewn on. And I could probably fit four more quite comfortably on here. So just sort of randomly tucked all over it. So I'm going to start crocheting daisies and kind of laying them on. And I'll see, like, I think I could probably do four more. So I think five might be the sweet spot for that size daisy. Once you've finished sewing it on, you just bring your yarn right through to the inside of the sleeve and just make a little knot on the inside. You can also knot it on the outside if you want and weave the tail in underneath some of those stitches. Uh, but like I said, this doesn't show. I'm going to trim up that little knot. Maybe just weave it back and forth through a couple of stitches on the inside just so that my little tail doesn't go anywhere. Nothing serious. This is, I'm not worrying about this uh, unraveling at all. And scissors. Trim. I'm also going to trim that knot. There. Toilet paper never looks so good. <laughs> I love it. It's so What's cute. Good? Yeah. Oh, it's so cute. Would make a cute baby hat. I yeah. We have, a, we have an Etsy pattern for a baby hat with a baby. Don't we? we actually do. It's the V stitch uh, baby hat. It's like a beanie for babies. And you can turn up the brim or you can leave it down, depending on how old the baby is. And it also comes with that daisy. Uh, applique because it just looks so cute on the hat itself so like I said I've used this daisy for a lot of things I really love it okay I'm just gonna put this to, actually I might take a photograph of that while I have it sitting here in my hand good timing we're just over an hour are we okay you know what I want to make a daisy from scratch start to finish uh on the stream and then we'll call it a day so are you going to uh, are you going to pay me overtime for this? Yes, I'll pay you extra chocolate. Extra chocolate? Okay. A little damp down here. <laughs> okay. okay. Let's make a daisy. So, I'm going to put my stuff to the side. I'm going to grab my yellow yarn to start. I am using a 4.5 millimeter hook, also known as a G or a six. Uh, some G sixes are 4.25 millimeters. It's such a negligible difference, don't worry about it. I'm gonna start with yellow, because we're starting in the center. I'm gonna make a slip, cinch circle, cinch circle. And I'm going to single crochet eight times into the circle. And we have a full tutorial for our little daisy applique. And I have no idea at what point it's at in the little tutorial mashup sub video there, but it is playing during the live stream today. One, two, three, four, five, We are six, seven, at eight. the daisy. We're starting right now. Perfect. So cinch circle, eight single crochet, cinch it up nice and tight. Join with a slip stitch to the top of that first single crochet you made, just so you get a nice little round yellow button of a center. Slip stitch to join and fasten off you don't need much tail you can uh weave your tails in or you can work over top of them which is actually what i'm going to do so i've got my back tail and my tail end that i just finished i'm actually going to work right over top of them as i go i zip the yellow grab the white and here we go with your white yarn you make a slip stitch or slip knot, I should say. I keep wanting to say slip stitch today. Slip, sn slip knot on your hook, and you can join it in any stitch you want, but I like to join it in the stitch right after where I fastened off so that I can pull those little yellow tails over top and then work over top of them. So I kind of tamp them down when I join with my hook. So I just sort of join it like that. Join the slip stitch. I'm gonna work over my tails, you don't have to. You can weave them in later, but I like to be quick. Chain six. 
you chain six with the white, skip the first two chains from the hook, half double crochet into the third chain, half double crochet into the fourth and fifth chains as well. So you've got a chain two and three half double crochets. That makes the top part of your petal single crochet into the last chain that just narrows your petal a little bit at the end. Find the next stitch along the center of your daisy and slip stitch into that. And that's where you can work over top of those short tails. So, and slip stitch. And that anchors, I'm gonna get my little thing out of the way, anchors your little petal. That's one. You've got eight single crochets around the center of your petal. So if you repeat that petal every for every single little single crochet, you'll have eight. Chain six, half double crochet in the third chain from the hook, and the fourth chain, and the fifth chain, and single crochet into the last chain, and slip stitch into the next stitch along the center. Um, you will have a false stitch on the center of your daisy. You should skip it. But if you feel like it creates too much of a gap between your petals, you can use it and you'll, in which case you'll have a nine petal daisy. So you should have an eight petal daisy when you're finished. But if you want to use the false stitch because you feel like there's just too much of a gap, then go ahead. You'll just have nine petals in your daisy. One extra petal isn't a big deal. You just have to sew down an extra petal. <laughs> Shari gifted a membership. Hey, all right. Woo! Thanks, Shari. Uh, how did that work out? How, I want to hear all about it. <laughs> so I'm going to keep an eye, but a big thank you to Shari, one of our channel members who gifted a, a membership so cool. to someone else. Thank you for trying that. So it's that. a random, I think it, it's a random. It just randomly, yeah, it gives it, oh my gosh, that's so fun. Thank you. Oh my gosh. That is so cool. <laughs> oh, the winner of Shari's membership is Debbie. Debbie, yeah. all right. <laughs> Welcome to the family, Debbie. That's fun. Yes. Yeah, that's fun. I love that. It helps us out. It gives somebody else like a, a chance to be a member for a little while. It is so fun. I love that. I love that YouTube did that. Got this is number eight. Working on my eighth petal here. When you're finished your last petal, you're going to slip stitch to join in the first place that you joined your yarn originally, which closes up the white part. So you shouldn't see any yellow gaps. Leave a long tail for sewing. Fasten off. And that is your daisy. So you should have you have eight single crochet in the yellow center. You should have one petal for each of those original single crochet. So eight petals altogether. I like to go around and pull out my petals when I'm finished. It is just such a happy looking little flower. Nice long tail. And then you pick up your TP cover and decide where you're going to put the next one. And I'm just going to put this one down a little bit and start sewing that one on. I'm just so tickled about this, this, uh, this joining. There's multiple Debbie's, so it's the Debbie, Debbie O. Debbie O. You'll yeah. see your name in green. It's uh, it's a random YouTube's algorithm sends them out randomly. Yes. Yeah, so if somebody buys a membership as a gift, they purchase it, but they have no control over who it goes to. The YouTube algorithm just sort of randomly hands it out. So it's it's kind of fun. It's kind of exciting, actually. <laughs> Okay, 
It's like uh it's like it's like winning a little raffle. It's like a raffle, yeah, exactly. Well, your uh, TP covers the success. Awesome. I'm really everyone's loving it. It's I'm, very cute. <laughs> it is cute. It's so it's so springy and fresh. Um, all right, so this this was kind of neat. I liked I liked being able to make this. I liked being able to run the tutorial along beside me. I think that's really cool. Um, there are a handful of people that want to be members, but they don't know how. So if you want to do a quick explanation. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so the there's a membership and uh, being a member of the channel helps support us. So I'm going to say that right off the bat. So that's a gigantic thank you to everybody who joins as a member or buys a a, a pattern at our Etsy shop. It all helps us out and we really appreciate it. Running a channel isn't cheap and life in Canada is very expensive. So trying to do both at the same time is a little overwhelming and, and, and stressful sometimes. But thank you everybody who helps out even just a little bit because it it really does help out. Membership is completely um, optional. You can join at any time. You can leave at any time. And uh, we really appreciate it. Please don't feel like you, you know, please don't feel bad if you have to leave because we know <laughs> that times are tough for a lot of people right now. Um, there are, if there's a join button under the video, any of our videos, you'll see a little blue and white button that says join. If you click on that, you can read through the whole thing. So there's a little video there, I think, that we tried to explain kind of back in the day. It's sort of an older video. We might have to update that. Uh, but there's different levels of membership. You can sort of read what they all entail. We try to uh, create some really fun and engaging perks for our members as a just as a thank you to sort of help help keep us going. It's us trying to help give back a little bit more too. Um, if you're just the type that likes to hang out in the live chat, then um, the alpaca membership is great. And it's basically like having one cup of coffee a month. <laughs> That's how much it costs. Um, and we really appreciate it. So um, if you're trying out any of the levels, thank you so much. You can also adjust between them if you want to at any time. And um, and if you're if you're just happy kind of being a subscriber, that's cool too, because we don't put our live streams or our main tutorials behind paywalls. We don't do that here. So um, we do have the odd little uh, extra video for, for Silk and Vicuña members, um, but most of the stuff we do for our members, everything gets listed in the community post section of our website um, where we do posts for everybody, but we do extra things for members there. Information is always given for members there, even if it directs you somewhere else. Um, and yeah, that's being a member basically in a nutshell here at the Jade and Stitches show. And we update the perk information every so often. So even if you are a member, it's sometimes helpful to keep an eye on the community tab. You can always go to our YouTube channel by clicking on the name Jade and Stitches. It'll take you right to the channel homepage where it says videos, playlists, etc., you can click on community and that will show you the tab. And if you're logged in, in your uh, YouTube account, whatever, um, whatever you are, whether you're a subscriber or a member, all of the relevant posts to you will show in that uh, community tab. Um, we love the community tab. We've been having a lot of fun with different posts and stuff. Um, and they keep kind of rolling out new little goodies for us to use in that area, which I think is great. Keep it coming, YouTube. Um, so that's basically uh, all you need to know. And then, like I said, if there's any information that we're sort of directing you elsewhere, it'll always show up in the community tab first, if you're a member or a subscriber. Um, and that is membership in a nutshell. And um, please like the live stream if you had fun today and you're kind of hoping we do this again. If you're a subscriber, thank you very much for subscribing to the channel. That helps us too. Likes, comments, any kind of way you interact with the channel really helps. Um, they keep sort of changing things up with the algorithm and stuff on like a weekly basis. Uh, so one week, you know, it's helpful if you include tags and uh, other weeks it's helpful if you include a hashtag and other weeks it's helpful if you just, you know, make sure you get a lot of interaction on the channel. We like the interaction because it helps us decide what we're going to do next. Um, it helps us sort of get a temperature check for what everybody's like into. We did a poll at the beginning of um, a couple days ago on the the, the, the the community post. We were kind of, I was wondering, like, what do you call this season? Like, we're after Valentine's Day. Not everybody makes stuff for, like, St. Patrick's Day or really anything going on in March. Um, the next big thing, I guess, is Easter. 
not everybody makes stuff for Easter. And then maybe like you're working on birthday gifts. Or, so I, I'm like, what kind of a what kind of a crochet season is this? So we had a fun little poll going. And it was just kind of neat to see where everybody was at. You know, if they were just sort of working on works in progress, or if they just were, they just wanted like cozy crochet projects right now. Or, you know, if they're really getting a head start on Christmas. Or <laughs> and it was fun to just sort of see everybody's comments weighing in. So we love that kind of interaction here um, because it's, 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 helpful to us to know what you're all sort of like you'll feel like doing in a week or in a month and uh, honestly this is our this is our clubhouse we like to hang out on our channel it's our clubhouse this is where we like to to play we like to try different things like we tried on on tuesday this week on mr and stitches channel so if you're not subscribed to mr and stitches i'm not saying you should <laughs> i'm also not saying you should i, I highly advise you to. <laughs> so we don't do much over there it's kind of like uh, it's sort of like where we 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 try things out, um, and we will probably be trying out this little gaming and crochet uh, live stream thing uh, on and off for the next little while while we figure out some of our new tech and software. So if you feel like hanging out with us, and uh, you know you don't really mind if we we just sort of randomly turn on the the, the the cameras and start live streaming, that would be his channel. Um, so it's a little less structured over there, if you could even say there's any structure at all. It's an absolute disaster. <laughs> it's an absolute disaster. But uh, that's the Mr. Stitches channel. So, um, yeah, that's that's kind of what, what's going on over here. Well, and we're getting a lot of yes. Yes to the gaming and crochet. Yes to the game. Okay, well, cool. Um, we'll, uh, we'll try another round. Well, uh, you can always click on Mr. and Stitch's name when you see his name in the chat, and that will take him take you to his channel website homepage. Is that how it works? Yeah, and uh, and you can subscribe over there. So if you want, this is a uh, we're gonna be just. I'm gonna attempt to. Um, very casual hangouts over there. I'm gonna attempt to put a. A note and see if it works. Yeah, I think all you have to do is just just type in the chat, and then people can click on your name. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. My new my new gaming channel. Your new gaming channel, if you can call it that. And a big thank you again to uh, Miss Rabbit, Jessica Rabbit. Hey! While I was looking on my phone, the Naughty Hooker. <laughs> that's a great name, I by love the way. That. Uh, gifted five Jade and Stitches membership. Thank you! Thank you very much! So I'm going to read so out who, a big thank you to the Naughty Hooker. I am going to read out who just won them. Yay! Uh, Christina F. This is so much fun. Mary H. Mary H. Cassandra M. <laughs> Becky, e. Becky E. Oh, Becky was hoping for one earlier. Aww. And Bobby M. And Bobby M. Wonderful. Wow. Oh, well, I love how that works. Congratulations to all of you like for winning. winning a and a big thank you to the, the Naughty Hooker. Big thank you to the Naughty Hooker. For uh, gifting those memberships. That's so um, great. Since we have so many new members today. Yes. Oh, we're doing some um, stuff. We here. should post all oh, yeah. of the um, the doing. access to the members page yep. and yeah, all we'll, that we'll stuff. Yeah, we'll update that. We'll update our community tab yeah. after the stream. We'll, we'll, we'll do several updates of things yeah. after the stream today um oh that's so exciting <laughs> i'm just kidding about the boomer gaming i just thought it was funny yeah. we're not boomers we're, yeah we're, we're too young to be boomers. we're gen x but we're not boomers. we're gen xers yeah. but boomer gaming just sounds like a great channel es especially gaming channel to me. especially when when half the channel is you like or half, trying the, to figure half stuff the stream out. is like you're drowned out by the noise of the video and you're like yeah yeah, yeah. yeah the <laughs> first the first like five minutes is the game drowning out our voices come on <laughs> we don't know what we're doing it's like the best live stream ever <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah so um, a lot of our members and, and subscribers like the little um, the little gaming and crochet. Well, so that is so we'll, great. We'll do that again for we'll sure. Definitely do that <gasps> some more. Oh my goodness! A big thank you to Connie who also gifted a one Jada Stitches membership. Thank you, Connie. Oh, oh that's so thank sweet. you, Connie. Who's Let's getting see. it? Who's getting it? Uh, the winner is. <laughs> this is so fun. Sandy Hex. Sandy Hex. Awesome. Congratulations. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is so fun. Wow, this is awesome. It's like it's like spinning a giant roulette. It is, wheel. it is. <laughs> thank you so much, says Sandy. Oh well, yay! You can thank um Connie and, and Connie. um and the YouTube earlier, algorithm. You can thank uh, the naughty hooker. 
Um, and I believe Shari, hey, Shari. from earlier yes. and someone else you. besides myself. <laughs> you can also thank Mr. In Stitches yes. profusely. Like, let's be honest. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Send him a chocolate emoji in the chat. I'm just kidding. <gasps> Joanna gifted a Jada Stitches membership. Thank oh, you, my Joanna. goodness. Oh, my gosh. I feel like there's confetti and sparks oh, yeah. going on in here. Aww. You need to see what it looks like. Yes, I would love to see what it looks like. Can you see? The... Oh, it's got a present and everything. Oh yeah. my gosh, I love this. So that's how the that's how the gift works. This is and so then fun. underneath you can see who won. Who won? Do you see it? Congratulations. Was oh Sandy Bar? I see it. Sandy B was gifted a membership by Joanna. That's... Oh my gosh! Oh, that's how it works. That's how it works. I love it. Congratulations to Sandy B. Guys, this and is a big so much thank fun. you to to uh, Joanna. Thank you so much. Oh, that's so fun. I love it. It's a kind big of... thank you to Diane who sent us a membership milestone. Thank you, Diane. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yes, if you're There's a new member. There's a lot member, of confetti and fireworks in here. I, I have to go back to the well. If you're a new member, you have a, a that entitles you to a membership oh, milestone. Oh, Sandy started too. using our custom emojis. Sweet. I love those emojis. They're so fun. Oh my gosh. Ah, uh, Christine says the Institutes family is growing. Well, since we've fireworks, we've, we've got a whole <laughs> bunch of new members. We'll definitely do a bunch of posts. Um, we'll refresh our community tab. We'll refresh the community tab later today yeah. with some new stuff. Um, we'll have a couple of of little goodies for everybody. We'll also have the detailed um, written version of this of what you're doing today. Yes, I'm going to make uh, this. This is going to be a published pattern in our Etsy shop today. And also. The videos that you're seeing on the screen will be linked. Yes. We're going to make sure that all of that is linked in the description box. Wow. Big crochet party today. Yeah. I'm going to go back to my hole. Okay. I'm uh, I'm just finishing up here. So I'm going to show everybody what this looks like. So now I've got two on. So you can sort of see the look I'm going for here. So I want to, I want to randomly add the daisies to the little toilet paper cover just so no matter what direction you're looking at it it'll it'll always look cute so you won't have to worry about there being a front or a back to it <laughs> oh, this, is too much fun. this is so cute yeah this is a lot of fun i'm glad we got that figured out because that's that's fun <laughs> all right so i've got my name in there so if you click on it it takes them to the mr and stitches channel for okay people that are interested in the crocheting game yeah yeah uh, and that's going to be very random when we do the crochet and gaming. Yeah. So, uh, um, you know, if, you, if you're if you subscribed, you should see the live notification pop up in your sub feed whenever we do it. We probably won't be, uh, we, we might put out a little quick notification before we go if we think to. But a lot of the time it's going to be us sort of fiddling with stuff. But I'll be there just crocheting on the couch and Mr. and Stitches will be there playing a game and we'll just, and we're, we can both sit in the same room. <laughs> so that's kind of fun. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll probably do a little bit more of that because it's it's really nice and casual and everybody can just hang out in the chat. It's, it's kind of like everybody hanging out in the living room doing their favorite hobby together. I love it. Uh, and that's exactly how it felt on, on Tuesday. So we're definitely going to do some more of that. I'm going to finish this little guy. I'm going to add a few more. I'm thinking one, two, maybe four. You know, four daisies might do it because I, I want them sort of evenly spaced but I want them to look kind of random at the same time. So I'm going to whip up a couple more daisies here. So one of my little things, little, little trick, if I'm making multiple motifs at the same time, so in this case, I'm making a bunch of daisies and I have um, like to, to do two different colors or, you know, there's two or three different rows, but there's a color change in between like there is with this daisy. I'll make all of the centers first, then I will add the leaves to them. So I won't make an entire daisy from start to finish and then do another one from start to finish. I'll make like all of the centers, put them aside, and then add all of the petals on them one by one. Um, I don't know that it's any faster. It's just that it lets me, if I want to keep my workspace a little more tidy, it lets me put away a ball of yarn. So I've got eight single crochet in that cinch circle. I'm going to cinch it up nice and tight. And join with a slip stitch. So that's one center. Oh, I've got my scissors in my lap here. And then before I'm finished with that yellow yarn, I'm going to make the second center for my other daisy. 
cinch circle, chain one, eight single crochet into the circle. There's a lot of love in the chat today. Yay! Everyone's having a great time. That's great. Good. We need that. We need that this month. Especially this time of year. Yes. We need lots of lots of love. Speaking of love, um, on Monday here in Canada, it's family day. Quite literally, not not because it's you know our channel. It's just <laughs> we we celebrate family day. It's something they they some kind of vacation, some kind of holiday they started a few years ago now. Um, there's my second center done. And I think it's it's generally a day off work for most people. Not everybody, obviously. I mean, I think if you work in retail or entertainment, probably still working on family day. But it is it is a day off for most people. And um, it's just nice. It's nice to have a long weekend in February because I feel like at this time of year, especially in Canada, where it is so dark and dreary for so long, Kind of nice to have a long weekend to just sort of uh, sleep in an extra day if you feel like, you know, being be kind of like shutting out the world or doing something with your family or, you know, taking the opportunity to do an outdoor activity or something or just sitting around doing some crochet. That's, uh, that's what I like to do, sit around and craft with my family. So I'm going to start some petals on my first center. Join, chain six, half double crochet in the third, fourth, and fifth chains from the hook, single crochet in the last chain, slip stitch into the next stitch along the center, and keep going. We do have a tutorial for this, and um, I know Mystery Stitches has been sharing the links to the full-on tutorials. I know it's also playing in the bottom corner. We'll also make sure that it's linked in the description box later. One of our uh, channel members, Joanna, is going to be joining has subscribed. Has <laughs> going to be joining the crocheting game. Oh, okay. Party. <laughs> hey, it's it's a fun hangout. It's more like a hangout. And you can bring your spouse because uh, you know there's something for your spouse there too. <laughs> Two, three. You know, even just crocheting a daisy makes me smile. I like I like how they look. I love how daisies daisies are the the <laughs> daisies are sort of the only flower I can think of at least here in Canada that looks like it has perpetual bedhead. You know, like their 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 petals are always kind of like they're never perfect. They're always kind of like what what happened? Like they just kind of woke up. I just <laughs> another reason they make me smile. You know, I have been so busy crocheting this entire time. I've got an entire glass of water there, and I've barely had any of it. Anyway, take a sip. Very good. All right. Another fun thing about making little flowers or other organic uh, applique shapes out of crochet is that if they're not perfect, that's fine because not much in nature is absolutely perfect. Everything's kind of just a little bit unique or off a bit. Um, not perfectly symmetrical necessarily. I know sometimes you do find some stuff that looks absolutely perfect, but most stuff kind of looks a little bit, eh, a little bit crooked, a little bit bent, you know, like things have to sort of lean to get the sunlight. But uh, also it gives you an opportunity to really play with different textured and different weighted yarns. Um, like you could use some really interesting, like you could probably get away with using some slightly fluffy like eyelash yarn if you were making the leaves for this, for this daisy, because it would just kind of give it a slightly more interesting look. It, it would still look like a flower, but it would look almost a little more, I don't want to say realistic, but just a little more like interesting, a little more textured. Um, 
and you would still recognize it was a flower. So if you've got weird novelty yarns sort of eating up space in your stash, you should try making some organic shapes like flowers with them, uh, because you might be kind of delighted with the with the uh, the outcome. All right, that was quick. That was Daisy number four. We have a nice long tail for sewing. There we go. And I will finish off. That, that was Daisy number, did I say four? I meant three. That was Daisy number three. And this is Daisy number four. And I think four is probably going to do it. I usually like to do odd numbers of things, but I think four will fit neatly around our little toilet paper holder. You're doing a great job there, sweetie. Great job. <laughs> Thanks, mister. I can never tell if you're like being playfully supportive or if something's just gone terribly wrong and you're being very sarcastic. <laughs> it's all in the tonality. <laughs> Um, and just as a quick aside, anybody who's interested in the hexagon purse that we were working on in our last live stream, we are getting close to finishing the tutorial. It's got um, a sewing contingent to it. So we were kind of playing around with how best to film that and not make it a super long or complicated tutorial because uh, we are putting in a lining that we are sewing. And I really had to sort of think about how I was gonna do it for a while. So um, we're nearing the completion of that. It will hopefully be coming out soon. And some folks have already gone ahead and made one based on the live stream we did there, was it last week, I guess? And uh, we're sharing some photos with us at the Etsy shop and they look amazing. So I just, I love the hexagon purse look it is such a cool looking it's such a it's such a just such a neat looking purse Some, some, some of our viewers are in, enjoying the fact that I sound like I'm down a, a rabbit hole. <laughs> it's the magical Mr. and Stitches. Magical Mr. and Stitches. Well. Hello. Hello. <laughs> yeah, we've got to make room for Mr. and Stitches in the craft room. So that's uh, another, another one of our lists, list items. All right, and that is number four. There we go. Two more daisies. So I'm gonna stitch them on, take a few more pictures, and then we will have this pattern available in the Etsy shop later today with all the pictures we took during today's live stream. Um, it'll include the daisy applique and um, the basic construction of the sleeve. So if you want to make a sleeve in any color and put on any applique for any time of the year, you can do that. So that'll be kind of a fun, flexible little pattern. We'll have that up later today. We're going to do some posts in the community tab for everybody. We'll have a, a post for subscribers. We'll have posts for our new members. And uh, we're going to update the website a little bit today, too. Uh, busy kind of Friday around here. Um, and we will also probably be live streaming and crochet gaming over on Mr. and Stitch's channel, possibly this weekend. We'll see how the weekend goes. Um, we're not, we've got, got a handful of things we want to get to this weekend, but the weather might be crummy. So if it's crummy weather, we're probably going to hang out and just uh, crochet and game. But we'll see how that happens because we are still filling with the, the whole setup and everything 
kind of fun. It's fun having new software and stuff to try out. And thank you all so much for being guinea pigs. <laughs> anyway, uh, I think we're going to wrap it up today. So thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Thank you for uh, bearing with us as we try our, our, our new uh, sort of live tutorial format. We thought we'd give this a, girl, a go. Like I said, this is a mashup of two other tutorials. We'll link the original tutorials down below. So if you're popping in later or um, you want to sort of see it in more detail, we'll have that for you. Uh, thank you so much to our members for gifting memberships today. Thank you for everybody who's popped into the Etsy shop and purchased a pattern. Thank you for the super chats. And um, uh, welcome to all the new members. I hope uh, I hope the next 30 days are fun. <laughs> We're going to do our best around here. And um, happy Friday, everybody. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Have a safe, crafty, cozy weekend. And uh, Monday is a holiday here in Canada. It's family day. So we'll probably have a special little post for family day as well. You can look forward to that. Mr. and Stitches, do you have anything to add? Um, big thank you to a new member, Amanda just joined. Welcome, Amanda. A few of, a few of our um, crochet and gamer um, <laughs> viewers and fans and members would like to know if they're going to get a notification. They uh, will if for we set Mr. up. And Stitches, but I don't know. Um, we don't actually know how that works. Either. Well, um, I'm trying to think, like, if we do it through the Jade and Stitches channel. No, it would be on your channel because yeah. that's where the, because we wouldn't want to confuse I figure anybody. what we'll do is we'll just put up. We'll put up, we'll try and put up the, the, like the stream notice early so that it'll show up. And if you're subscribed, it'll show up in your feed. Oh, when you see yeah. stream upcoming. So when the stream says upcoming, you'll also see a little notify me button. So you can click the notification button on that specific stream and then off you go, do your own thing, you know, watch some other videos or whatever. And when the stream is starting, it'll 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 notify you. In fact, I'm not even sure if it doesn't pop up in some software and start playing. I don't know. They keep changing that, but um, but you can always click the notify me button, and then it'll tell you when the stream is starting. Uh, so once again, we're going to play with the format over on Mister and Stitch's channel because uh, it's just part of the big experiment. We're fiddling with software, we're kind of <clears throat> melding some software with with YouTube, seeing how that goes over there. Um, so yeah, if you're subscribed to Mr. and Stitches, it should show up in your subscription feed that there's a stream upcoming when we set up the stream. We'll try to do that with enough heads up that you can have at least half an hour or so. And if usually live things kind of pop up in your home feed too, um, but always check your subscription feed. If there's people on YouTube that you're subscribed to and you want to follow closely, whenever you open up YouTube for the day, Click on the subscribers but or the subscriptions button first before you get lost in your home feed because I'll do that and I'll just be for an hour scrolling through the home feed before I even check subscriptions. So check your subscription feed just to see if there's anything new from anybody you follow. And if not, then you can go back to your home feed. That's what I do. That way I don't miss anything from anybody that I'm following. Um, yeah, so uh, we will see you guys soon. Thanks so much for hanging out today. Uh, pattern coming shortly. And uh, look forward to more posts in the community tab. <laughs> okay, so we're going to wrap it up then? Yep. All right, everyone. Thanks for uh, joining us today. Thanks for hanging out, and uh, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.